markets and how they finished uh, in the early hours of this morning, Asia. The S&P 500 and the Dow actually had their worst day since uh, October, uh, down by, well, over 2%, in fact, for the S&P 500. Uh, the Nasdaq was down by 2.4 of 1%. We saw a lot of volatility coming through overnight, really heavy trading session as well. But you've got to ask the question, I guess, here, uh, why buy when you have this uncertainty surrounding the situation in Greece and Europe? You've also got NFBs coming out early this week on Thursday. Thursday because of the long weekend that's coming up in the States with Independence Day, right? Mm -hmm. Let's sort it all out, bring in Peter Schiff, CEO of Euro Pacific Capital, joining us live out of Western Connecticut. Uh, Peter, good to see you and appreciate your time as always. Good to have you on the show. So, you know, Savage selling heavy volumes uh, overnight. Uh, the thing is, I mean, what took the U.S. market so long? Well, you know, I think, to be honest, I think the Puerto Rican problem uh, is uh, looming a lot larger for the U.S. than what's happening in Greece. Uh, and I think the potential for spillover is, is greater. But, you know, the irony of it is that Puerto Rico is actually more solvent than the United States. The only difference is the Federal Reserve is monetizing Treasury debt, but not Puerto Rican debt. You know, if we didn't have the, uh, the okay. Federal Reserve uh, in our corner, uh, we'd be defaulting, too. Right, hold on. You're not saying that the selling that we saw overnight was due to was on Puerto Rico as opposed to Greece. You're not saying that, are you? Well, it got started, I think, because of Greece. But look, we closed on the lows. The Dow was down uh, 350 points and percentage wise and Nasdaq down 122. Uh, but I think the people that are actually thinking about what's going on. I mean, if 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 Puerto Rico is going to default on a significant percentage of its municipal debt, uh, you know, a lot of Americans own these bonds. They're in a lot of funds. There are a lot of other cities in the United States that are also in trouble. People might begin to start pricing in risk in the muni bond market, and, and that could be a concern. Maybe they'll start pricing in some risk into the Treasury market because it may not be default risk, but there is a lot of currency risk. You know, I've always said that if Greece were to leave the Eurozone, it would be a positive for the euro and in fact the action that we had in the currency markets with the big reversal in the euro kind of supports my position here because now that a Grexit has become more probable we're getting strength in the euro and not weakness and 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 that could portend a lot of downside risk for the US dollar which means people holding a lot of treasuries around the world see some real currency risk Peter, look, uh, overnight on CNBC, we had uh, Jim Cramer talking about the fact that people out there are too complacent. Um, when you're talking about, you don't seem too concerned about the uh, contagion effect from Europe, from the situation in Greece. However, one of Jim Cramer's points was that you only need to look at the price action on the US markets overnight to see that the contagion from the situation in Greece, even if it's just sentiment based, is not going to be contained just to Greece itself or even in fact just to Europe. It is something that's going to impact the bigger markets around the world it is going to impact the states and you should be trading accordingly what would you say to that well I think the way it impacts the states is that people recognize that there's not much difference between the United States and Greece I mean the problem is countries have borrowed too much money and the United States is the leader of that club. You know, one of the reasons that Greece was able to borrow so much was because for a while interest rates were artificially low in Greece because people perceived uh, lending to Greece this, the way they lend to Germany. It was all one currency, and so people didn't perceive the risk. You know, the same thing happened in Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico had very low interest rates uh, because of the, the tax-free nature of their debt in the United States and the fact that so many uh, funds needed high higher yield because yields were so low so they were dying for Puerto Rican debt and so the Puerto Rican politicians like the Greek politicians were, were, were eager to promise something for nothing but politicians all around the world have promised something for nothing particularly here in the United States and that's the real contagion about Greece is that it's a wake-up call because lots of countries Trees took on too much debt, and they're not mm, going to pay it back yeah, either. Yeah. So, so Peter, what do you do? What, what, what's the trade here? You believe there's more downside coming from the U.S. markets. How do you, how do you protect yourself? Well, I think, look, ultimately the downside is going to be muted by the Fed. First of all, the events in Greece, maybe even Puerto Rico, who knows, 
could be the excuse the Fed's been waiting for in order to not raise interest rates and ultimately launch QE4. But I think more people might start you know, backing up the date by which they think the Fed will raise rates, and that will ultimately support the market, as will QE4. But I don't know that it's going to cause the market to make a huge run up. I just think it might stop it from crashing, which is yeah. what should happen. The U.S. stock market is a gigantic bubble, but I think the Fed is determined to keep reflating it with air. But what, what people need to do is look at the real opportunity in the equity markets outside the United States, particularly when the U.S. dollar turns and money flees U.S. treasuries uh, back into the emerging markets, back into commodities. Uh, uh, there are a lot of markets that are going to benefit from the deflation of the dollar bubble. You're not going to tell me China, are you? Excuse Money's me? already fleeing by the looks of things. Well, look, you know I'm a long-term bull on China. Uh, you know, the biggest problem with China is their monetary policy because they're trying to prop up the U.S. dollar. Uh, but long term, you need to be in China. You need, to, you need to be buying into the market as it comes off. Remember, everybody's talking about the big drop in China. Well, th look at where we rallied before we dropped. So we're still, we haven't given back the entire rally. But no, there are other mature markets, too, in Asia that people could be looking at. You can invest in Hong Kong. You can invest in Singapore. There are countries in Southeast Asia. There are a lot of markets other than the United States where there's much better valuations. But more importantly, you can invest in countries that aren't broke, that aren't in debt. In fact, there are, uh, there are countries that are solvent, that are actually lending the money that all these other countries can't repay. Mm, okay. All right, Peter, always good to have you. Thanks again for staying up so late to chat to us. We appreciate your time. Good to see you.